If your RockShox lockout works in the same manner before and after locking out, that means you probably don't have the problem on the lockout lever, but rather on the damper side. You can see I can pull the cable with the lever, but then it doesn't go back. I can force it back, but it doesn't work by itself. That means we have friction there. I'm showing you now how to open it because the good news is you can fix it. And this is the RockShox Judy Silver TK. You can have similar damper end problem on the RockShox Recon and RockShox 30 models. If the damper is a little bit different, you can still use this video in order to figure out whether it's the damper problem. And if it is, you can fix it. I'm removing the whole assembly right now. These are all the parts where the cable goes and now just pray that it will work. 24 millimeter socket and we are going counterclockwise. Now, if you cannot remove it with your hands, use something with the towel. So don't go met metal versus metal. And now the instruction on the RockShox manual say that you can unthread it, this movement, for me is the best one to remove it and not damage the o-ring. Now, how to check this problem? That's how you do it. You can see that my damper doesn't want to open by itself. And the friction is right there between the top cup and your shaft inside the damper. There is no RockShox manual about that because the, where the manual ends is actually how you remove the damper and replace the O-rings and that's it. But this is actually removable. So this is the top cap I just removed. If you've noticed, we are going clockwise to remove the top cap. Here is the spring, which is so important right here, but it's in top shape, but the friction is right there. You can feel that this shaft doesn't move freely in the top cap. So we are removing now this little seal. It's not the O-ring maybe, it's a seal. And this seal is not symmetrical. So you need, you need to remember how to put it back on. Yeah, you can even hear the friction right there. The fix is simple. We need to grind a little bit of the material of that shaft where it touches against the end cap. I'm using my drill and this is the P240 sandpaper, but a used one. Uh, you can use 1000 even. It takes maybe 20 or 30 seconds with such speed to prepare that surface to, to be ready. And this shaft has two surfaces that actually twist against the top cup. One is ready now because I feel much less friction. I'm just trying to figure out which method will be the best. So this was the first surface. This is the second one. And what I'm doing is that I have my sandpaper right now uh, wrapped around some really thin uh, piece of uh, wood. And now I can grind the other surface. Again, 20 or 30 second, seconds, not more. Seems like this one, this damper, when it's not in use, it gets swallowed a little in the oil. Now, so much better. So what we're doing now, cleaning, greasing. Yeah, huge difference. And reassembling everything. Again, no instruction from RockShox for this part, but it's pretty simple and straightforward. So you put the grease under the rubber seal, you put the grease on the surfaces which will touch and rub against. And this is the seal. It will go with this thinner side upwards and the thicker one downwards. Now it's full of grease and now it's important to know how to put the preload on that spring. So I'm going to show you that right now. You can see exactly where I put the grease. Now we're going to assemble this. Now there's a little tooth right there inside. You can see it right there. And for the shaft to go through, you need to use this groove. So only this groove will allow the shaft to go all the way down. You see, I'm twisting it and it falls down nicely. This spring, I'm showing you how it looks like inside. This part of the spring has to catch that tooth and then we'll be able to put the tension on it. The other side, it goes through the groove in the shaft 
I hope it's called the shaft, and then you can see the groove for the other side of the spring. Pretty easy, but just no. This moment is crucial. You need to be sure that the shaft goes all the way, and now the spring will click down, and now I can feel that when I'm turning the shaft, now I'm just checking whether it's all the way down it is, now I'm backing off a little bit with the shaft so that I'm able to put the preload on the spring without opening or, or closing the damper, you see? So I'm a little bit higher now with the shaft. Now I got the tension. Now how much tension? The more the better? Not really, because more tension will help you actually close the lockout, but it will be very easy for the cable then to fall off uh, that little top cap which is holding to it. So you need to feel that it works smoothly, just like this. I think from this picture you can see how much tension I have there. So there's a nice spring, springy move. Again, we are going counterclockwise when assembling the top cap. I'm checking again whether nothing has changed. No, nothing has changed after the assembly. Now I'm putting the grease uh, on those O-rings. Then in what grease? I just use the suspension grease. Now it's ready. It's good moment to check your oil there, but I have new oil right there, 122 milliliters. And by default, this damper is opened. So you can simply push it down, the oil will go through. And now we are going clockwise. So this part is assembled. Now the cable stop. If your cable is frayed or old, it's good moment to replace it also. It's, uh, it should be easy, but these levers are so low quality. So you're not gonna be able to push it just like that through one hole to the other one, uh, th through the exit. I'm opening that lever, then I will bend my cable just a little so that it fits the shape of the whole lever and now it goes. Just make sure you don't you don't break the cable right here and make sure that that cable is under the cover. Just like that, I'm pushing it back and now I will I will just check the operation of the lever. It works fine. There are two holes, uh, so make sure you use the same one. And now we are cleaning the cable, going through the cable, stop, and then all the parts go in. Very important thing right here, my friends, is that if you put a lot of tension on that mounting uh, bolt, mounting screw, the damper will go with more friction. So you need to go as low as possible for the cable to actually be pinched there. And I love RockShox forks, but this assembly is a little bit too weak for the cable. Before cutting off the cable, I'm just gonna try how does it work. It goes smoothly. As you can see, you can hear nice click and the damper is working. Now with these, quite often I would need to do <laughs> preload, which means when installing the cable, when fastening, uh, fastening it here, I will need, the third hand is really handy here, I would need to actually turn this damper a little bit into uh, towards the lock position so that the lockout will be firmer. I'm gonna check it out right now. Open, locked. Now, this is not rock solid. And so I'm doing that little trick now. I'm preloading the damper. You can okay. see I'm changing the position of that uh, top much. cap and now what it does, um, it works just as if uh, the lever of the lockout would be pushed a little bit right from the start and after that preload, now it's much more stiff. Let me know if I helped and see you in the next one.